Hello, my sweet babies. How's it going? We're here uh, on uh, beautiful Mount Tolmy. What up, what up, what up? Victoria Island. Sorry, that's an inside joke. Uh, it's Victoria, BC, Canada, and it's looking real fly today. Welcome to the second episode of Does a Podcast in the Woods presented by TRMF. These are my friends. These are my friends. What's up, D? I mean, we're doing this out here. Look at this place, dude. This is- it's a beautiful fall day. I'm enjoying the heck out of this. Yeah. In the middle of August. It's a beautiful August. fall day in the middle of August, for sure. I mean, look at this. This, I don't know. This is, uh, this is really, really random, but this is reminding me of, like, for no real good reason, like, Giovanni's lair, Team Rocket lair in uh, the Pokemon movie, like, the first ever <laughs> Pokemon movie where he's way out in the jungle. Just this view here, we can see, like, the, anyway, I might be alone in that, but, uh. I can't recall what that looks like, but I uh, take your word for it for sure. Are you reading that? You're like, I can't recall what that looks like. (laughs) I. It says here, I don't know that movie. I can't come up with a genuine thought, man. I write it down ahead of time. (laughs) Which is really impressive, dude, to to imagine that Dylan is just this whole time. He's uh, fully on script. He has never deviated from his character sheet. He's a completely different person than you've grown to know. I've got the uh, stopwatch sure. going. Just because. Uh-oh, I've only got six seconds to live, it says. Jeez, uh, jeez, oh, yeah, you yeah. need to reset that. Oh, fix the battery. Okay. <laughs> okay, bro, what was it you were going to Did you want to kick things off or yeah. did you want to start with some good takes? You got something? So it's good takes, bad takes, every take in between. No, no, it's not bad takes. It's only the most exceptional, wonderful, good takes. I the beholder. That are man. 100% serious. I the beholder. All right. So, um. Uh-oh, there's a plane. Uh, it's not going to come. It's what? Oh, it's coming. <laughs> He's doing a little flyby for us, dude. The Danish is intruding. <laughs> the Danish is intruding. Okay, well. Yeah, I'm self-aware. Go ahead. Um, They're watching us. They're trying to see what we're up to. What's up? What's up, G? What are you doing? We see you flying. You look at flies. Okay. He's following the style. Okay, go ahead. I think there needs to be public swimming pools for dogs. Imagine an all-age swim with a bunch of pups swimming around you. Can we not bring our dogs to the Commonwealth pool? Is that not? Uh, any pool. I, uh, I, think, I think it's I, frowned upon. I, a flea bath. I don't really care. I think I'm just going to keep bringing my 17 schnauzers to the <laughs> Commonwealth pool. I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it's something that needs to be fostered into the uh, public pool system. Bring the your public, dog day. The public pool system. <laughs> all right, what do you got? What do I got? Uh, I think I think that, like, for all those gamers out there, we need more microtransactions. What we need is if I want to change the color of my cape or my cloak in a video game, I'd like to pay through the nose. I'd like to pay through the nose for it. I want to pay handsomely for it. We've been we've been able to put color sliders on clothing and capes and our characters since Super Nintendo, and that shit is too customizable. I think that it's we should make people pay to look slightly different in a fake video game and a fake reality. Uh, so you're on, Lots like, uh, Blizzard's Warcraft sort of mindset steam you know ea all the way pay for everything yes yes we pay for ea okay i think um so apple vision pro is coming out um i think they should make an app that allows door-to-door virtual uh donation taking so let to me explain. donate to like apple or google no oh. it's unicef girl scouts and they go door to door but it's virtually done through the headset and uh, it's either a robot with like a debit card machine strapped to it, or it's like a drone, and uh, it bangs on the door, and uh, nobody's getting kidnapped. And uh, yeah, people can just like hit a red button and it so turn like, around and go away. Scouts, drones, like drones that have like different badges on them for tape for like building fires and right. doing different stuff. Right, right, right. But like, like, wow, this is an accomplished drone. It can make brownies and you could do Well, you could do, I mean, you do all that sort of stuff at home, but you do like all the donation door, so you door end stuff. Up, okay. So safety I, of your, your presence. So what you have is you have somebody like basically flying a, uh, Hey guys. Hey guys. So basically like flying a, uh, a drone, like, uh, and it comes up and it's got like a boxing glove on it that goes boom and like knocks, knocks on your the door. door or something. Yeah, yeah, it hits your doorbell or whatever on like a spring with a glove on it that has a Mickey Mouse hand for some reason on but it. The, the one down. And then you open the door and it's like, hello, insert your card. Yeah, tap and then if you, you just... want or, or piss off. Um, oh. What about the Joho's if they find it? That technology. They're not going to want that. They want to talk to you. Yeah. They want to tell you about. It could just be like a big screen strapped to its head. <laughs> Oh Hello! My. Oh my god, can you imagine what people... Boom! Would, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly where I was going with that. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, if it wasn't a human being attached to that ridiculous intrusion, then... I uh, follow Hinduism! Yeah, exactly, yeah, for sure. <laughs> totally, man. 
All right, what do you got? What do you got? Um, yeah, this is more gamer stuff. Basically, I think that uh, I want to be able to pay to play, you know, P uh, pay to win. Pay to win, you basically. You want to give big, rich no, companies more of they your money. I deserve it, is what I'm saying. I want to be able to sit there and use the real money that I've earned by working to purchase an easier path through the game that I paid for by working. So I can hurry on to the next game that I buy with the money that I worked for. So like pay to play, you're a big candidate of that, eh? That's right. I want to be able win? to... Actually, maybe the next Xbox system needs to have like a credit card insert machine where right on the card, you can just tap right on your new Xbox and you'll your character just gets God mode for the next like half hour. I mean, you can the, just run through the game and not have to even play the game. It just plays itself. Maybe like an expert will play the game for you if you just insert your card. You'll end up getting an actual real life pro sitting on the other end of the screen. It's Timmy or somebody like that. ACU will just come and play on your account and like basically smurf your account into like platinum or gold or whatever. Most people don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Basically, pay to win. Pay to win. Always a good thing. And um, I'm pretty sure on Xboxes, you could just have your like email linked with your imagine, credit card. Imagine how good billionaires would be at Fortnite or whatever. Anyway. That's 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 insane, dude. Um, it's easy. I think we need a museum slash theme park dedicated to just John Hughes films. Just imagine walking through the library in Breakfast Club with the gang talking shit. Ducky from P Pretty in Pink doing a wheelie through the I thought the this joint. was bad takes, homie. Come Eat on. Eat a fat ice cream sundae with Kevin McAllister and then hide out from the Wet Bandits. Just a whole like John Hughes theme park. It's tight, isn't it? Tight. I think that exists somewhere secretly for the real like ones. Like a museum dedicated to If you know, you film. know. Yeah. Somewhere in Dutchland. <laughs> John Houston. That's, I don't know. What, what do they call that? You have to work on a name. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Huge land. <laughs> Huge land. Yeah. Sounds Dutch. Works. Nailed it. Yeah. That's, I, I don't know why they call it that anyway. <sighs> All right. What do you got? I think just less games in general. <laughs> I think just less, maybe kids play outside more, like in the street, like Sesame Street used to encourage. I see. Yeah. Now kids don't have any idea how to safely, like, run into traffic to get a stray ball. It's pathetic. Like, they don't know what they're doing now. Their surroundings are, like, two inches in front My of their face. My friends and I used to just run around in an intersection. Yep. Try, it's good for you. It is. It thickens the skin. It was the 90s. Um, so I think the pay-to-play is ruining the gaming uh, world and just get people outside. I think that's your whole... We were arguing the whole way here about this. <laughs> uh, I got one more. Um, and this is not really a bad take. This is just some shit I saw on the internet. It's kind of trippy. So I watched this remake of that old Disney show with Shia LaBeouf in it. He was actually in it too and it was called Heaven Stevens and I think he had a crush on his mom. Heaven Stevens? The Heaven puking dude? Heaven Stevens. We've all seen it. Yeah. We've all seen the puking. It's like the Ford truck guy. You know the guy that's like the Calvin that's pissing? The yeah. Heaven Stevens. You stick it on the back of your like Ferrari or some supercar, right? And it's Wait, just is a that dude a real just thing? Puking. Yeah, it's, it's Heaven Steven. He's just puking everywhere all over the back of Are your Are you Lambo. making this up now or is this a real thing? What are you talking about? <laughs> I, you know. I think I was on Red Tube, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> It was insane. Anyways, you yeah. can find Heaven on the on on the tube, dude. <laughs> know what I'm looking at later? Oh, um, okay, so uh, I think we need to ban caffeine instantly. Oh God! Right here begins the war on coffee. No stimulants. This is the war on mornings. Yeah. Mm. And to couple that with this, this is sort of a, a side one. It goes with it. It's we need to make marijuana weed for those of you. We need to make weed and or mushrooms mandatory for government meetings. No entry to the House of Commons without eating a couple of Scooby snacks. You got to chill. Have you seen those dudes? No shit. No have you shit. seen a bunch of people on mushrooms? They get that loud, but they're laughing. They have tears in their eyes. They're crying. So they're Simon, solving man. the problems. They're appreciating. Have you ever seen the House of Commons going ape shit on each other? Those guys could use a couple of Scoobs. That's the secret. If you know what I'm saying. That's okay? the secret to world peace, man. For real. Just chill out. Microdose, bro. Just lose, you have to microdose or yeah. you're not allowed to govern my city. Microdose, yeah. There's a limit play within it. Or macrodose. What it's up to if yeah. do you, boo? Go into the <laughs> government chamber of commerce. Fucking flying, okay? Insane, Technicolor man. dream coat. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, what about, okay, one more thing. Indoor smoking sections that are like an outhouse-sized quarantine tent with a chimney venting to outside. Mic drop. Outdoor smoking chambers? No, no, indoors. Indoor smoking oh, chambers. Oh, the outdoors. Now you're thinking. Okay. Now you're thinking. We'll put them outside, too. But I was just thinking for inside so that you could smoke inside. You just hop oh, in. Oh, and it's just a big fan. It just, no, well, it's like a big, it's a big um, plastic 
quarantine tent, essentially. You zip, you go inside, zip, light up, and it's like, just like venting, you know? Little fans are going, it's pulling the air out, the smoke disappears up there. And you, you can bring that shit back to Denny's and you have your Grand Slam again like the 90s. Out. That's the right. Cigarette. Yeah. You put it out, you can unzip it and back to the table at Denny's and sit there with Grandma. Done. Fucking, okay, Dude, okay. I know it was supposed to be bad takes, but I'm a fucking genius, so come on. Uh, but all jokes aside, though, <laughs> <laughs> gnarly. Yeah, I <laughs> that's the, the funniest of... one yet. That's the worst take yet. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the smell of cigarettes while I'm trying to eat my Grand Slam. Mm. <clears throat> yep. Brings me back to my childhood. Oh God, yeah. Um, so AI you man, just get the cu- the cook to like stick a butt or two on the edge of the plate for me. Yeah, 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 with some ashes in it. Um, AI man. AI man. You know what? It's weird being a part of this world because. You start to see thing, a trend in things and you realize, like, am I going to be the Metallica to the Napster? Like, am I going to be the guy who's like, no, I don't like the future. While everyone else in the whole world, down to the people, you know, who are, who are you know, in, in a single uh, room building somewhere in Africa who have their cell phone and are laughing on the Internet right now. Every single person is going to end up using AI. They're all going to start playing with little free AI games. As this gets more and more rampant, they're going to start making cool pictures with AI, and they're going to start making cool stories, and they're going to start making show posters, and they're already doing all of this. And there are there's a movement that I, can, I understand, I totally, 100% understand, with artists to push back against this and have real art have meaning. And I am have to be there for that. But... Also, we're in a world where the algorithm and the fucking robots are in control of our art and the people who see it. So if you want to be an artist and have people see it, you have to use what we have available, the tools we have, to try and fight back against the algorithm to make your real art get seen. It's it's weird. I'll interject for a sec. Um, Please, yeah. The other side of things is we all know it rules the world. It's money. And um, the, the, the big companies like Meta... Uh, Amazon, uh, you name it, Bezos, Zuckerberg, those people, they're in the control and they are riding out the AI steamboat and trying to uh, will. hold against that is futile. So, I mean, you can be one of those people that support the um, the local artists and stuff like that, which I fully am and I fully do, but um, it's kind of one of those things where it's not going to go away. To but- me, it's a really similar uh, response. So, suppose that Now, here's a really super secret strategy that I'm not supposed to say, but suppose, like I'm putting my my own secrets out there when it comes to this. Suppose you wanted to generate a lot of AI images so that you could skew the algorithm of a social media into, into looking at you more so that your real life art that you actually made gets more eyes on it. Use it as a funnel. Use it as a tool and a funnel to make the algorithm look at you, to make it look at your real art. Like I mean, instead yeah. of fighting against this shit, this is what I'm saying. Like implement it. I hate to say it, but you could be the guy. It's just like I I didn't have my music on Spotify for a long time because I was like, man, that's no way to make money. This guy's gonna make give me cents on the dollar while he gets rich off of my potential music. Meanwhile, who am I? I don't have that many followers on Spotify at the same time. So I eventually end up joining them. It's a service I end up using. I don't like it. Right, right. I wish that it was all about the artist and every cent went to the artist, but it won't. It's Spotify. We have to use it. It's part of the fucking world. The you want to stand there against Spotify, be my guest, but I'm not going to, I can't afford to. Oh. I can't afford it. I have to try and show people my art with every tool available. So artists who draw, think about your stance on AI. Think about if you can use it to use your imagination and bring it out because it's coming anyway. Your neighbor who has no artist bone in their body is going to start making pictures really soon and they're going to be cool and you're going to hate that so either join them or be left behind it's all i'm thinking i'm just like but i'm torn because part of me is like i want to have integrity and not use ai the the the, i think the key is always to be truthful about it always tell people when you're using AI. it's categorized yeah yeah don't be don't be a a, a, one of those fakies right don't fake it just don't front so as a guy who I'm a drummer, a real drummer, real drums, hitting it with my real hands and real sticks, right? In a real band with no metronome going while we play live. We're playing organic music. At the same time, I have program beats for a different project. And at what point is automation not okay anymore? 
in my art, I can put a hi-hat that goes and I don't have to hit that hi-hat. It's not really me playing it. It's actually just automated, right? Right. So what, at what point is automation not okay? I do have to say, though, I think, because I'm a drummer as well, I think, like, there's obviously a time and a place for it all, but I think real acoustic drum kits banging on a fucking song, even in electronic music, to a certain degree, other than 808s and stuff like that, that aside, real drums, acoustic drums, sound way better than drum machines. Just going to say it. Well, how can you tell that when... I mean, yes, that's fair. I, a lot uh, of songs you can tell if it's a drum machine or not. Or you can have it. It's a pretty good guess. Or you think you could tell. But really what you're hearing is a lot of times you're hearing real drums with a sample added in yeah. background, right? A mix. How about, like, say, Nirvana? Spells, uh, smells like Teen Spirit. This could, You know, just because I saw uh, how they did it, kind of like how they mix that song, right? You'd think, like, Kurt Cobain, he wants it to be raw. He wants it to be real, right? You can tell when there's, like hocus pocus going on right totally. when it's not real and when it's real there's like three or four or six guitars going there or his oh, his there's. vocals there's like four of of kurt and two of dave grohl singing everything on the whole producers one never mind yep. like this is the thing it's like how much fakery are you willing to have because some people really like when you fuck around i take a picture of the sky and i change the colors with technology with it's not me. Fuck. I, I'm not doing it. I'm sliding a slider. Programmers did it, right? Essentially. Programmers made it so that I could pick a blue out of the sky and turn it purple on my phone. So I'm doing that and I'm taking the credit for nature's work and my thing. So it's all just about like, it's about your taste. It's about your, as an artist, you're almost a curator of things. This is my next point. I know I'm babbling a lot right now, but this it's all is all good. My next Babylon. Because on my way over to your place, because I've been doing this thing with taking some cool photography of something and then turning the sky purple, turning the trees red or green, really just messing with color. That's all I'm doing. It's just taking a natural world and messing with color in a vibrant way. Sure. (laughs) Maybe maybe saturation, all those things, right? Like just parking right around with it, making it kind of artsy fartsy and making it look cool to me. But what happened I noticed was when I was driving through the natural world, I started noticing the greens. I started being like, Oh, that's more of a blue green. That's more of a yellow green. That one there, that's got red in it. And I started noticing all the reds popping out of all the leaves and stuff. And I was just like, oh my God, dude. Not only is this just for photography, this is about how art makes you appreciate your life. Yeah, man. Dude, I I use the uh, Adobe Suite and fucking, I've been using it forever. Photoshop, uh, uh, Illustrator, all that thing. And then you start looking at things like, oh, that's C305 green. Or that's that's whatever, you know, like the code, yeah. the color code and stuff. Yeah, you even know what they're called. Yeah, well, to a degree, I'm making that shit up right yeah, now. But, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like you're like... Uh, people who really do how, this all the time, right? You realize algorithm. now, you realize this all right now that all photographers have that thing where they're looking and they're going, yeah, I see like cars and trucks and stuff. But if I was to just get that shot, I'm seeing a beautiful picture. And so like, I, I made it look like I was looking right at you. <laughs> I am seeing a beautiful, a picture. beautiful picture, Dylan. I was looking yeah. past you at the tree for reference, but uh, I don't know why, because here's a beautiful picture right here in front of me. But uh, no, yeah. So anyway, guys, it, basically it's just, I, I had a revelation, a further revelation about how art enhances your life. It's not just in music when I'm in my travels, oh, there might be a sample I could use for a beat. It's like, oh, now that I'm doing photography, there's a great picture. Now that I'm changing that photography's colors, I'm like, oh, look at these colors. So if you're wondering about how to, you know, if you're not happy and you're feeling underappreciative, just go outside and try to do some art. It doesn't have to be good. That's inspiring, man. It's just to, uh, as a lens, just to look through the world. Hell yeah. Okay, well, with the AI conversation that we got going here, I got something that's uh, pretty cool. All We've right. been delving into this AI stuff a lot lately, um, as I'm sure as you know, the majority do. of the world yeah. is. It's an adventure we're all on right now. So I found this website. Uh, it's called Story AI. And oh, sick. it uh, made, literally, I put in a prompt, which I'll tell you in a second here, and it made me a, a whole three-page story in about five seconds with art. Okay, let's see. Um, I haven't read this yet, so this is this is going to be fresh, fresh right here. I have it right in front of me, so if it's good or bad, you be the judge of what it did in five seconds. It's bad. But... <laughs> So this goes to the whole thing of the uh, what you're talking about earlier, the artists making a book and sitting there for like, you're writing a book for how long? And then I just popped in a, a sentence. But would it be my book? <laughs> it says it's by Dylan, so it's giving me Uh-oh. credit. <laughs> it says I could buy hard copies for 20 bucks. <laughs> uh, hold that thought for after. Okay, so go ahead. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so the prompt I put in was two men in the woods do a podcast. But when a fuzzy creature named Bismarck takes over, chaos ensues. You okay? Why Did Bismarck? Bismarck get you? 
<laughs> Why Bismarck? Bismarcky, young Biz. So uh, here's 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 chapter one. Here's part one, page one. In the heart of the forest, from the noise of the city, two nature enthusiasts, Evan and Lawrence, I guess that's us, had taken up an interesting hobby. They had turned their shared love of nature into a podcast named Woodsy Whispers. Each week, they delve into that's deep good. discussions about wildlife, fauna, and their fascinating experiences. That's the first page. That's pretty fantastic. I think we should just switch our, our Woodsy trajectory. Woodsy Whispers. Today was their third episode, and they had set up their portable recording equipment in their favorite spot. It was a serene area with a crystal clear stream running nearby. The scene was set for another peaceful podcast. As Evan and Lawrence began recording, their discussion flowed effortlessly. Okay, a little bit choppy, but that's okay. It's the AI's, AI's fault. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot, AI. You make me look like an idiot. They were in the midst of discussing an owl's hunting habits when they heard a rustle in the bushes. <laughs> As they turned to investigate, a fuzzy creature emerged. It stood on its hind legs, looking curiously at the two men. It was nothing like they'd ever seen before. The capture, sorry, the creature approaches them without any fear. The creature, whom they decided to call Bismarck, seemed quite interesting in the recording equipment. I'm pretty sure it meant interested. It des- we decided that it would have a name in the middle of not knowing if it was going to kill us or what it was or anything. We in our really, fear, uh, we're like, ah, ah, this thing's named Bismarck. That's a total Bismarck. What yeah. else? Okay, good. Yeah, it sounds like us. Bismarck pressed a couple of buttons and squeaked into the microphone, astonishing Evan and Lawrence. The creature seemed to wow. understand the equipment. Wow, Bismarck, you're really good with that thing. <laughs> you get a shot of us? <laughs> Just, hey, Bismarck, stop it. Uh, <clears throat> surprised and amused, they allowed... Bismarck to take over. The creature began chattering away into the microphone, clearly enjoying itself. Evan and Lawrence watched in awe. They were witness to something utterly incredible. They realized that their podcast had just taken an unexpected turn. Bismarcky takeover had just begun. (laughs) The creature seemed to be telling its own stories while Evan and Lawrence sat in silence amusement. It was absolute chaos, but incredibly delightful. The fuzzy creature continued to dominate the podcast, making itself comfortable in the front of the microphone. Evan and Lawrence couldn't help but <laughs> chuckle, exchanging beamish glances. Beamish? What? Bemused glances. Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> beamish glances. Yeah. Bismarck added something different to their podcast, an unpredictable element that was both chaotic and charming. The forest seemed to be enjoying their new unexpected guest. The forest enjoyed it. These are our friends, I guess. As the day started to fade into twilight, Bismarck wrapped up its chatter. For the first time since Bismarck had arrived, the forest returned to its silent tranquility. With a final squeak into the microphone, Bismarck hopped off the makeshift studio and disappeared into the undergrowth, leaving the men astonished yet delighted. Evan and Lawrence were, were left alone, surrounded by the calm serenity of the forest. The excitement of the day left an undeniable mark on their hearts. They couldn't help but laugh at the day's unexpected events. What had started as an ordinary day turned into one of the most interesting experiences of their lives. So I'm starting to see that it's very, it's using General. a lot of filler. Well, it's, it's filler. using a lot of filler. It's like, a lot of it's extra like They're words. just talking about how amazed we are over and over again. It's actually like the it's, opposite of what a teacher wants you to do. Fil- yeah, it's just like, just yeah. to strip My away the My name is Dylan Jerry yeah. Hanksworth McCannell. Yeah. <laughs> I got <laughs> five get, words. Trying yeah. to get as many words yeah, and characters as you possibly in, can. Yeah. <laughs> um, Today was an exceptional, beautiful, pretty, introspective kind of a sunny day. <laughs> so t- yeah, two pages of work was basically uh, uh, an animal, a fuzzy creature came out, and but that's these all dudes that were. Gonna, but then again, that it knows that that our little brains are only going to remember that. Remember that time it told us the story about this weird creature coming out, and like we all had a different idea of what that was in our head, and it's, yeah, it knew how to use our mind. podcast equipment, and it knows the the like point form. The yeah. point form was like three things. Totally. So it continues. Oh shit! There's it, more. There's more. Chapter two. In the days that followed, the podcast gained a massive following. Their listeners chapters. were as amused by Bismarck's takeover as they were. It was a massive success. Woodsy Whispers became more than just a regular wildlife podcast. It turned into an enchanting mix of informative talk, forest sounds, and Bismarck's delightful interruptions. People loved the sporadic interruptions by Bismarck. It gained a fan following of its own. The creature was a hit on the podcast, and the chatters were loved by all. For Evan and Lawrence, their experience in the forest was more exciting than ever. Each week, they eagerly looked forward to the chaos that Bismarck would bring. Each podcast episode was unique and unpredictable. What will happen? You never tell when Bismarck would show up and take over the podcast. That element of surprise was what made it truly special. We we don't even know if he's coming. He's just popping in, yeah. Oh, shit. We're going to all different locations, too, like... 
I was going to tell you how to how to work the crypto system, but Bismarck's here, so we're just going to squeak into the mic for, uh, oh, for a second. Oh, chaos. Uh, yeah. Wow, how zany. Yeah. Bismarck had become an integral part of the podcast. Its unique chatter and he infectious show energy up. added a whole new dimension to if Woodsy Whispers. If he doesn't show up, Woodsy Whispers is going under. <laughs> yeah, shit, man. I hope he shows. Yeah, this is the sad downfall of Bismarck and how we forced him into Hollywood and His fame. His views are getting he, yeah. fewer and further between. And he's looking The dark skinnier. side of Bismarck. Yeah. He's looking, he's looking tired like he hasn't slept in days every time he shows up to the podcast. He's a workhorse. With, with Bismarck. Evan and Lawrence would he's often say that the forest was whispering its magic through Bismarck and their listeners couldn't agree more. <laughs> Sorry, go back. Evan and Lawrence would often say that the forest was whispering its magic through Bismarck. Dude, we that's, would often say that. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh-huh. And their listeners wouldn't agree more. It was like nature was sharing its own stories. <laughs> Woodsy Whispers was no longer just a podcast. It had transformed into a community of nature lovers brought together by the enchanting chaos of Bismarck. Okay. Oh God, is he ever chaotic. Yeah, I just keep saying that he's chaos, but because oh, uh, that was the prompt, but it doesn't really necessarily state what he's chaotic he macro about. macro doses. That's right. <laughs> Evan and Lawrence couldn't have been prouder their love for nature had created a unique platform that resonated with people and it would have been possible without the fuzzy woodland creature so we're almost uh, we almost have no done. credit yeah we don't get any credit for our woodsy whispers <laughs> podcast we it's all so bismarck now yeah we just locked out hella that some weird crypt cryptid came out and started messing with our yeah. with our gear <laughs> what started as a hobby had started had sparked a movement woodsby whispers had become a voice of nature enthusiasts everywhere in bismarck was the mascot they didn't know they needed. In the heart of the woods, the legacy of Woodsy Whispers continued to grow, and so did the bond between Evan, Lawrence, and their fuzzy co-host, Bismarck. As they sat on their favorite spot, they realized that these moments were precious. Bing Mark. <laughs> Today we have Bing Mark. He changed his name. He's going through a whole transformation thing. Hang on. Today we have uh, David Attenborough on the podcast. Wait a minute. Never mind. Get out of the way. We have. He's here. He's Bing Mark. Bing yeah. Mark is back. Yeah. Wait a second. Yeah. Don't dead name him. Got all, got all Hollywood Mark. and sh- changed his first name. Bing Mark squeaking away in the background. Their podcast had become a part of the forts itself. <laughs> Jesus. Fade into the leaves. These were the magical experience they'd cherish forever. Each podcast episode was a new adventure, and they couldn't wait to uncover the tales that awaited them. Today was just another day. Oh. Today is just another day. Today was just another day in the enchanting world of Woodsy Whispers. Tomorrow the forest would whisper new stories, and they be there to share them with the world along with Bismarck. I got to wrap this up quickly because we got to switch the camera over. Evan and Lawrence signed oh. off on their podcast. They heard the heart, their hearty laughter echoing through the forest and the sunset. They packed up their gear, <laughs> leaving their studio to the, its real owner, Bismarck. Okay. Now Bismarck is the owner of the podcast. Yeah. Well, we, we saw it. that coming. Yeah. As the night fell, the forest came alive with the nocturnal whispers. Two men and a fuzzy creature turned the piece of wilderness into a stage that shared nature's hold stories. Hold on, hold on. The legacy little slower. Of wood- the forest came alive with whispers? What? The forest came alive with nocturnal whispers. That's fucked up. It's kind of creepy, yeah. Sorry, that's Two fucking like black metal shit. And a fuzzy creature had turned their piece of wilderness into a stage that shared nature's stories. The legacy of woodsy whispers lived on. The end. You made it. Wow. Okay, just a little pee break, and we'll be right back. Hi. 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 Oh, man. So what do you think of that story? Why do you always there, take so long to piss? Dude, I had to piss I've been waiting for like 25 minutes. Over the edge minutes. here, and a, and a gentleman was underneath eating a, 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 a oh, bologna just sandwich. stop. Don't, I don't want to know. <laughs> it's always the bologna sandwich guy with you. I, I ruined his picnic. Um, yeah, so what did you think? So I think like I... Maybe I'll try. I think it could be it better. shorter. Yeah, I think that well, it just reiterated the fact of chaos and it only and had so much, right? It, it only had so much to work with, and it managed to to create enough filler with the small details you have. This is why the prompts are what make the artists, right? Like, yeah. So that was an example of what AI is capable of right now. But that was five artist. seconds. That was very impressive. It said it's working on. And the other funny thing, which I'll put up uh, in post, but like it actually created full on art pieces. So it was like. Uh, a part of the story and a picture for each thing 30 pictures it had and like it even said in the de- in the description it's like yeah we we're aware that like the characters change throughout the Duh, story because it's ai and it's they haven't AI, figured out how so to it's like, like it's like it would be like you're an old guy because i based it off obviously what we're doing right now you're an old guy Lawrence. and then i'd be like a young guy and then like it's like two japanese old men with like a fuzzy cat and the creature changes oh, that's and, more accurate so like all the art changed throughout but I was pretty impressed with what it could accomplish in 30 seconds off literally one sentence. It was pretty To me, it's impressive. funny if you just call it what it is, which is AI. Because there's something cool about I, there's something in the human brain that likes the idea of gambling. Right. And gambling is 
an input that has an unexpected output. What's going to happen? We don't know. That's the fun that we, prompt. you know, yeah. so you put the prompt and what's it going to be, right? That's the fun part. Like how could it, Oh, this one actually is pretty sick. Like it's a fun thing to do, right? Making these pictures as we've done before, is pretty funny. It's fun to do. And when you, aren't very good at it. It is a little bit of a skill to know how to do the prompts because you're not w very good at it. All the faces are all like raw and like horrific and yeah. it looks really dumb and the hands Nightmare are gimped and stuff. Fuel. But if you prompt it right, it actually tidies that stuff up. I've learned since. I've learned that you can actually make AI make nice pictures if you know what you're doing with it. So it's like that in itself, not everybody is going to be able to make very good AI pictures. Just like not everybody is able to make very good use of Instagram filters, right, say. Right, right, Whereas right. Some Butcher people make incredible of use out of Instagram filters, which are types of AI. It's types totally. of automation. It's and, in its infancy and yeah. obviously it's got a lot to learn. Um, let's hope it doesn't learn too much. But I mean, I was, I'd give that like a five out of 10 out of- uh, The story? Uh, well, just how it did it so quick was pretty impressive. It's I mean, it took what I, it literally took what I said and, and it, it was very literal. It's, it danced the around is, the subject. It didn't come up. Into it didn't its own. do any of that. It's a formula, right? Yeah, like it, it just shoves in words knowing that like what grammar rules have been set in place. Right? I wish it would have made, I wish it would have made, which is obviously coming down the pipe or maybe a better program more like it would have been more intuitive to make a better flesh out a story. Like why was there chaos? Why was it? So it just kept calling That's the cat chaotic. You. And I was just like, uh, That's up to you. So maybe I, maybe I failed the system. Well, Maybe you, I got I got to put more into it. You next didn't time. fail it. Well, if if you're hoping to get something more out of it, then obviously you needed to put like a couple more things into it, right? Give it a little bit more to work with, and then suddenly other stuff will crop up, other characters, other things you might have put. It's on New York's bestsellers. Bing Holy Mark. shit! It, it even created it changed the guy's name. Yeah, I mean, it changed what do you to want? Bing Mark. Yeah. <laughs> like Bing the fuzzy Mark. takeover. Look for that story online. It's uh, Man. I'm selling copies. Twenty bucks. Actually, this no, been, I pay 20 bucks, 25 this, bucks. Yo, this has been a banger spot, though. This like, let's just appreciate serene. how friggin' beautiful this is right here. Like, podcast or no, it's just nice being here. Holy moly. Do you got any more about AI to, uh... No, I mean, the problem I got a couple, is, like... I got one more segment. So. I was just gonna say, I feel like I'm... I'm either, you know, people are going to say, oh, he's pro AI or he's against AI. I don't know. That's the point is that I just don't know. I don't want to be, I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to sit there and go, they be the grumpy guy in the rocking chair. That's like, oh, all these people that are having success and enjoying themselves with AI and having fun. I don't, I don't buy into it. I'm against that. What, why, why do that? I'm alive right now. I'm part of the people of the yeah. world. I'm in this weird simulation shit that we're doing called life. Might as well mess with it, man. Just play around with it. So I'm not. I'm not for or against as long as people aren't out there saying, I'm an artist. I made this AI picture. It's like, be bro, truthful. You're an excellent imaginer yeah. and a great prompter. That's yeah. what you are. You're creative. Right? You're, you know, call it artist, whatever. A so, little side note there. Yeah. It was hilarious. I was watching this TikTok and uh, very side note because I didn't get in depth and I didn't understand everything it was saying. But it basically was saying that, like, you know, string theory. You've heard of string oh, yep. theory, the basis of basically the whole universe, universe as a whole. Yeah. I think it's been undone, but I, well, I think it's undone, but then there was this other like scientist dude, PhD, it literally was a TikTok that was 40 seconds, but he said that there's actually, he was able to determine that there's these blips in it that resembled code zeros and one. So he was basically saying that the universe is the matrix. It's, I think it's like, I think that's essential. And now I'm going to sound like a real idiot to anybody who knows what they're talking about, but I think that's what photon or protons and electrons are yeah no? i guess so but he said that it, it resembles it zeros either. and ones like computer language well it's either there's an electron or there isn't one that's what everything is basically you know what else is trippy that i that i've heard and that i that i just know but it's if when i'm touching this yeah i'm never i'm never actually touching it everything that you touch is just repelling you like, so if you sit on a chair, you're not touching, no part of your legs or anything are touching the chair. What? what you're feeling is the repulsion of it. All matter is just pushing away to make itself solid. That's what this is. That's how you feel it. What, a, what about what I'm in a plane? It's pushing away. Anything you touch. Anything that touches anything, I should say. That's fucked. Anything we're, that we're touches, levitating. If it doesn't bond, it's repulsing. And that's what, you it's, know, it's, when I put this microphone on the on the ground it's right. hovering by repulsion right like, it's so like we're electronic. all levitating essentially like like yeah. a hyper inch or whatever that would be called R well, a hyper it's inch. a hyper inch that's the imperial <laughs> anyway guys uh, i think i've done enough sounding like a complete fool for the day and well, the, the sun is just stuff. coming out let's fun wrap stuff? up with one more fun little subject oh you got more that's good because the sun's coming out it looks it's beautiful beautiful man yeah. yeah okay well we're gonna go into uh, a little bit of crazy on set film 
stuff. I didn't come up with a clever name. This okay. Time. But it's basically crazy stuff that happened on film. We've talked about stuff before. Like, remember the 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 stunt double that killed one of the other stunt do- or the janitor that killed the stunt double in Psycho, Alfred Hitchcock's 1960. It was on a past podcast. Look it up. It actually happened. Remember that? Um, so it's going to be more stuff like that. Just crazy stuff that really happened on filming sets. So uh, we got one. Uh, a plot. Jesus. How about Riot on the set instead of Quiet? I don't know. We'll work on Riot it. Riot on the set. No, we'll work on it. Uh, Apocalypse Now. Have you seen that? I have, and it, I was Coppola. pretty baked, and it's kind of like a trip in itself, so I don't remember it very well, but I would like to see it again. So but I've fun, seen it. Fun little fact with that one. Police showed up on the set of Apocalypse Now in the Philippines and took everyone's passport after discovering yeah. they were using unidentified bodies purchased from a grave robber as props. What, you can't do that? Uh, apparently not. In the Ooh. Philippines, co-producer Gary oh, it's a Philippines thing. Okay. told the Independent they didn't know we hadn't killed these people because the bodies were unidentified. I was pretty damn worried for a few days, but they got the truth and put the guy in jail. After sold- soldiers removed the bodies, the film used extras instead. Where do you source this? Like, we need some bodies. They got to be real. Yeah. Wait a minute, what? Oh, man, you got a body guy oh, yeah. in the Philippines? I got a guy. Yeah. Yeah, you want him identified or not? Yeah. This He's going to cost you. Too? They yeah. should have paid the extra bucks for identified bodies. <laughs> That's the problem. Nah, man, just give me what you Listen, got. Listen, you go to the Philippines to shoot dead bodies filming, then you're going to want to pay for the extra for the identified ones. That's or you're going to lose your passport. Pro tip. Um, okay, the next one is Titanic. Have you seen that? <sighs> the two VHS that? box set. What is that? The <laughs> Titanic. Yeah, no, we don't know either. Anyway. A ma- oh, okay. A majority of the Titanic cast and crew were poisoned with PCP spike clam chowder. So they were all rushed to the hospital at 1 a.m. I'm waiting. Crew member Marilyn McAvoy told Vice, nothing was ever officially determined as far as I know. Among the crew, there were rumors that it had been a disgruntled chef that had been let go, but nothing ever came of that. So they think that uh, like one of the chefs that was cooking up clam chowder for the cast of Titanic... If you know what I'm saying. Spiked quite, with PCP. Quite literally. Like... Bro, that's heavy. Like, wait, what was that? No, no, there was flax. The, what was the Sufficient. James Cameron th- story with that? Somebody put acid in like a punch bowl at a James Cameron movie, like uh, wrap up. Like, oh, I didn't hear about it that. It was something like that. It was like the Transformers, uh, like ra- another rap disc- party. gruntled, yeah, like a rap party or something. I can't remember what it was now. It was like a. I, oh God, I gotta look it up. But it was the James Cameron thing where basically, like everybody, yeah, a bunch of people got really high on acid without meaning to because they somebody spiked the punch or whatever. Take this, use this. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Avatar three. Saying, somebody needs to sneak into <laughs> Parliament, and start spiking the orange juice or whatever. It'll help out a lot. The whiskey or whatever they're drinking in there. Um. <sighs> all right, next one. While filming the sermon on the mount, seen in the Passion of the Christ, Jim Caviezel was struck by lightning. He said, about four seconds before it happened, it was quiet. And then it was like someone slapped my ears. I had seven or eight seconds of like a pink fuzzy color and people started screaming. Sounds pretty tight, honestly. He was doing a Jesus scene or something Sounds and he got struck by cool. lightning. He's on the cross. That's, that's, uh, that's Maybe a Maybe they don't want to like, carry him like, around like that in the thunderstorm. They're just, yeah, they're using him <laughs> as a big lightning rod. Oh, yeah. oh this is going to be great. This shot's going to be great. Put him up there. <laughs> Hoist him easel. up higher. Yeah, that's. Why the aluminum cross, dude? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's making way too much and we gotta figure out how to get him off bank pay- payroll <laughs> he's sitting there praying like come on <laughs> <laughs> yes oh he lived <laughs> shit um okay this next one is actually kind of spooky um I've talked about it before but uh it was on the Twilight movie um Vic Morrow was actually chopped up on the um actual shooting of the film have you heard of that what he was chopped up there's a helicopter scene that landed and it actually chopped his head off. And I think it, he had two uh, Indonesian kids or something like that. And they also were killed Ooh. during the filming. It was super I sad. I didn't Rest realize that was real. Holy peace. moly, that's scary. So an actor dying while filming a movie is a tragic and unusual occurrence, but it isn't necessarily a spooky one. put a one. warning on that little moment there. For, yeah, yeah. For, for the trigger warning folks. But uh, yeah, that's a heavy one. In that the sucks. case of the Twilight Zone movie, however, it was both. As the circumstances surrounding lead actor Vic Morrow's death were anything but ordinary. A year before his death, after signing on to do the movie, Morrow took out a life insurance policy worth $5 million, which was back in the 70s or early 80s, 1980, I think it was, which is a lot of money, even though he had no health concerns at the time. The actor told his friends and family that he had been having dreams which made him sure he was going to die soon. Later during the filming Ooh. of one of Morrow's final Twilight Zone scenes, a helicopter crashed onto the set, killing Morrow and two child extras. This left some believing Morrow's oh, so it crashed reminiscence. On them. Yeah, oh. it's actually fucked. You can see it online. If but like Whoa. it's blurred out, but it's it's fucked. I don't yeah. I don't this know. left some believing Morrow's premonitions had come true. A notion strengthened when they realized Morrow's death was identical to one of the Twilight Zone storyboard artists had conceptualized for the movie. 
Yeah, a little fucked up. That's that's the last one I had. But so, so that's he, a, a year before he took out life insurance because he had homie li- dreams. was working on a Twilight Zone movie. And it was the Twilight he, Zone movie, the yeah. movie itself, and he ended up meeting a Twilight Zone end. So the scene is like this big it's like crazy. pond or something like that, and it's like I guess rescuing them. I haven't actually watched the real movie, but they're rescuing this man with two kids, and he's like walking through this big pond up to his uh, like. Like Whoa. up to his crotch with the two kids in his arm He's and waiting. the helicopter lands a little too close. It was windy and yeah, propeller blade just whoop, whoop. Yeah. Super sad. Rest in peace. Nothing but respect to all those involved. Well, that just gives you uh, perspective on how very badly things can go and pilots aren't like amazing. So I like, think it was just shout out to all the pilots who are so incredible who do it shitty safely. Shitty conditions that they well, shouldn't have been I flying mean. as like, well. How, how, they got fucked obviously with Plenty of action, counteraction, sue lawsuits and stuff like yeah. that, which is duh. But um, I, like, yeah, I can't remember exactly. It doesn't yeah. say it in this article, but I think the, the kids were just extras from like somewhere well, else. Well, anyways, and enough it, about that. Yeah, I'm they done got with one that sec. Story. They got. They got. They. I'm just saying, the kids got like the parents sued and shit like that. You said that. Yeah. I hate this story. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, we it could was, end with a was, happier thing. Anyways, you got anything happier than that? No. That <laughs> now we have to end with that. We're doing so good. <laughs> Oh man, I had it. I thought I had it in different order. No. Uh, Bing we, Mark, the, the the crazy cat. Remember yeah. Bing Mark, everyone. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> oh, I actually have one more thing related to AI: computer okay. vision. Okay, we'll end it's with this. Computer vision. Computer vision, a branch of AI, enables computers to analyze digital images and classify objects, individuals, and actions. Recently, advancements in this domain have empowered robots to achieve human-level performance in tasks like object de- detection and emotion recognition. Guess why that's features sucks. of computer visions. Features of computer visions. Convolutional neural network, CNNs, are a significant breakthrough in deep learning, specifically designed for visual data processing. Computer vision finds potential applications in manufacturing, retail, and entertainment industries. <sighs> well, blah, anyways, blah, 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 blah. Yes, there you go. The so computer can see you. That, <laughs> what, what I'm trying to say. What it means is the CAPTCHA is fucked. The CAPTCHA? Yeah, the, the CAPTCHA. The, like, the, like, CAPTCHA? Is that a drink the, the, at the, Starbucks? <laughs> it's the it's the it's C A P T C H A. It's CAPTCHA or whatever, like the CAPTCHA with a C H. Anyway, it's the thing that's basically the like the the, the verification system. It's like everything. You click all the pictures that have a bike in them. Oh. Click all the pictures that have a crosswalk. Click all the pictures. What is that now? Deems you're not a robot. Oh yeah. Now the robot sees all the bikes. Yeah. Now the robot, robot sees knows robot. all the crosswalks. Robot can't and all tell the buses. robot. Now the robot te- knows. Yeah. That's what that is. So it's That's coming for you. Your phone is going to be watching you. TV is well, going to be watching you. You, you, you know, bots are going to be everywhere instead and of I real And I do people. have one more segment, but that we've only been going for 35 minutes. I totally, totally blanked, but we got to hit this. Um, you got anything that you want to wrap before I get into this next one? No, I think I babbled a lot today. I'm just seriously just like vibing on the uh, the treetops the here. The beautifulness it's of nice. what this is, yeah. Let's take a serene Looking moment. at the ocean, we got a like a, basically a almost 360 degree view of the ocean right now. What would you call that? The Pacific? I'd probably call it the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, I think <laughs> nice. that's the one that it is. Yeah, I think I would call it that too. Yeah. Um. Okay. These are shower thoughts. <laughs> the southern tip of the <laughs> Vancouver Island is what it is. That's the uh, Olympic Mountains over there in the U.S. of A. Okay. Let me Seattle. get Seattle. Let me get my. Um, oh man. Who's that Shaka Kong Smith? Uh, what's the little boy from, uh, not Willow Smith. Oh man, I always say, I always say his name and now I forget it. Um, Jaden. Yeah, let me get my Jaden on. Okay, shower thoughts. Oh, okay, 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 here we go. All right, Focus all right. Focus up, focus your noticers. Doctors hope you get sick. Lawyers hope you get sued. Cops hope you're a criminal. Mechanic hopes your car has troubles. You ever think about that in the shower? I feel like we could like um, more powerfully arrange that so that the end one isn't just the stupid mechanic one. Yeah, it kind of seems out of order there. It keep, like a mic drops on I think something. That it's like the doctor hopes you get sick. Yeah. You know? Yeah, they should have restructured that. But shower thoughts, man. The social justice warrior hopes that There's you no rewrites in the shower. cancel yourself. Learn it. Oh, you said that. Okay. I thought it was just Jaden. Oh, no, no, no. This is Jaden 100%. I'm ripping, oh, this is off Board Panda, too. I'm going to give credit okay, where I got word. these from. Okay. Instead of colorizing photos. No, no. In 50 years, we will be removing filters. No, we won't. <laughs> We'll say that looked worse as a regular picture. Tobacco companies kill their best customers, and condom companies kill their future customers. Think about it. Think about it. It's pretty good. Do not touch would probably be a really unsettling thing to read in Braille. 
Yeah, just like corrosive. <laughs> just acid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for telling me. Uh, last night, my friend asked to use a USB port to charge a cigarette, but I was using it to charge my book. The future is stupid. Thanks, Diane, age 68. <laughs> Jesus. Nothing is on fire. Fire is on things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time a character dies on a TV show, I just feel bad for the actor who pretty much just got fired in front of us. Yeah, so shitty getting to be an actor. <laughs> <laughs> At least they had a chance. Yeah, and, and to get their paycheck and leave that set now. I think that's the actor's favorite part is when they no longer have to work there. They're like, over, done, job done, yeah. Yeah, typically. Unless you, like, work at the office or something. Then Earth. you're, like, going to cry, probably. All right. And go on to your massive career. <laughs> Earth is like a guy who knows exactly where to stand next to the bonfire. Dude. <laughs> the socialite. <laughs> just, just like, I'm perfect, chilling. yeah, right by the sun. Yeah. Taxes are like a subscription to your country that you can't cancel no matter how bad the service gets. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you can. You can leave. Go to a way worse provider. Yeah, true. Yeah. Go to Kudo. Or a better one if you're in a shitty country, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Beijing. Your dog doesn't know who can make mistakes. Hey, don't name names. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, I love my cell phone provider, out. Beijing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about... Never mind. I get you. Yep. I get you. <laughs> your dog doesn't know you can make mistakes. When you trip over him in the dark, he thinks you just got up and kicked him in the head. That's not true. That's not true. I always tell him I'm very sorry after, so. I'm glad dogs can't read the no dogs allowed signs, so they don't feel sad and left out. And the last one, all right? You ready for this? If you had $1 for every year the universe has existed, approximately 13.8 billion years, you wouldn't even make the top 50 on the Forbes list. What the hell is that? How does anybody know how long the universe has existed? I don't know. Boardpanda.com no does, though. No way. No amount of billions of years. What's on the, what's before that? What's before that, huh? Yeah, Bored Bezo. panda, yeah. huh? Yeah, You're trying to lot. say when things began. Well, that's even all I got, bang, man. Even the Big Bang, they don't even know for sure. There's people questioning that the way that that is. There's things that predate that. I don't know. Anyway, we're 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 branching. We're branching into many different. Thirteen point eight billion. Yeah, I wonder where they get their 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 facts from, but. Anyways, man, it's turned out to be a pretty lovely day. Does a podcast in the woods. Does a podcast in the wood. These are my friends, TRMF. Thank you very much Follow for it. hanging with us, you guys. I'm looking forward to the next one. We're going to come back to this mountain because there's even more places than just here that we were scouting out that look really beautiful. So, And anybody we'll under back. the age of 18, do not look up Heaven Stevens online. It's not for you. That was no. a joke. No. Uh, yeah, exactly. But they are giving us a lot of money for plugging it again. Yeah. Yeah. I had to work it in twice, at least. So, All Yeah, right. buddy. Word up. Word up. Peace out. Peace. Yeah, I think we should, we should, we should turn this off.